Hello everybody, this is Tim once again. I just got done watching the uh, remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'll just go ahead and write off. Be, I mean, I'll just go ahead and be blunt and give my rating to this film. It's a three-star film about the possible four. It's a good movie, but it doesn't hold a candle to the original. And judging it as a remake and compared to the original, it's not very good. It's got a lot more stylized sequences in it, like when the girl shoots herself in the van and you see the camera like pan through her. Uh, fucking through her mouth and out the wound at the back and out the hole in the back of the van. It's a neat shot, but it's too stylized. The original film relied on like a a low budget, uh, realistic feel to it. This film has a much more unrealistic feel to it. Um, but it's not a bad film. This is a good film and one of the better remakes out there, but it still has no reason to exist. The original film was fine on its own. Uh, but anyway, jump into the cast here. We got a similar setup. We got five people, five friends who are, except this time they're heading to a fucking Leonard Skinner concert. So you lose the creepiness of like the graves and stuff being dug up right there automatically. Um, but um, you got five friends heading to a Leonard Skinner concert. You got this guy, Kemper. Uh, he's the boyfriend of Jessica Bill in this film. I don't remember Jessica Bill's character's name, but uh, I'll just call her Jessica Nice Tits Bill because she wears a white t shirt all through this film. and you can see her boobs bouncing up down non-stop, so that's, I'm, I'm, that's pretty much better than the movie, to be honest. But anyway, you got Jessica Nice Tits Bill. You got um, this girl named uh, Pepper, who is uh, dating this uh, bl uh, blonde guy. There's three guys. You got the blonde dude, and then you got this other boy named, I don't remember the blonde dude's name either. And you got this other uh, other boy, his name is Morgan. He's like the token nerd of the group. Well, let's not get any pussy, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, um. Into the story here, they're heading to a Leonard Skinner concert. Um, they pick up a hitchhiker. She fucking starts freaking out because she doesn't want to go where they're headed because they're heading basically in the Chainsaw Familyville. She, she pulls out a gun between her legs and blows her brains out. Now this is an entertaining scene. I'll enjoy the scene where the chick shoots herself, but it's not as cool as the hitchhiker scene from the original film. But it's it's all right. Uh. So they head into town, they got a dead girl in the back of the vehicle, they also got a pinata filled with pot, and so obviously they gotta call the police and uh, get the sheriff out there, or cop one, to get this body out of here so they can keep going to the Leonard Skinner concert. Um, but anyway, um, just, uh, they gotta get rid of the weed, of course, because they don't want the cop to see it, and think, they think they'll get in trouble, so... Uh, Kemper fucking fucking tosses the uh, pinata full of weed like over in the weed somewhere, so they go to this um this little uh, fucking gas station similar to the original film. You got this old lady in here who's kind of like uh, the partridge or well the leader of the family. I'll just call her Mama because that's pretty much who she is. Her character, uh, she does fine. She's no cook replacement, but she's fine. But um. But yeah, um, so they get her to uh, call the fucking sheriff to send him down there so they can get rid of his body and continue on to Leonard Skinner because, let's face it, it's fucking Leonard Skinner. <laughs> but anyway, the, she tells him that the sheriff wants him to meet him at a certain uh, certain spot, and obviously this is set up to get him all killed. Uh, so, I mean, anybody who's got half a brain or seen more than one horror movie knows that this chick is obviously in on whatever's happening. But um, they decide to... <coughs> Sorry. They decide to head over there to this uh, old Crawford Mill, I believe is what it's called. They decide to head over there. Um, so they head there. They're fucking waiting around. You get like a jump scare here. I call it the jump scare possum where they hear a noise. They're looking around and it's a fucking, they open up this, uh, they open up these doors and there's a fucking possum there. It's like the jump scare possum instead of the jump scare cat movie. You, you just created the new cliche, jump scare possum. But uh, anyway. And so you get that, and then you get this little kid with fucked up teeth show up. I guess he's supposed to be like uh, related to the family, but he's probably like a, a a baby or something that the family got from somebody they killed and raised or whatever and raised him. But he doesn't like killing and shit, so uh, he's like a nice uh, member of the Chainsaw family for once. Um, so they're waiting for the sheriff, uh, Jessica Bill, and uh, her... Uh, her fucking man, uh, Kemper, decided to go and just call and just call the sheriff and talk to him themselves. They head uh, out to this house that's like right next to the place where they're at. It's obviously the Chainsaw family's house. They head in there. She wants to use the phone. She goes in there to use the phone. Um, fucking her man sneaks in there. Uh, 
he gets his fucking uh, brains knocked out with a sledgehammer by Leatherface, who looks good in this film. The, uh, I mean, like his look is really good, and the way they play him in this film is good. I definitely prefer the way they play him in this film to the fucking way he was in Next Generation. He's much better in this film. He knocks, uh, he knocks Kemper out with a fucking sledgehammer, kills him, his body jerks and shit, entertaining. He drags him off, slams the door, similar to the uh, original film, but it's, it's played good here too. Uh, so he drags him off. Jessica Biel hears it. She's like, "What the hell was that?" Or, <laughs> and she basically gets, she's gets done talking to whoever the fuck she's talking. I guess she was talking to a cop. I'm not for sure because uh, I believe this town is deserted. So I'm not sure who the fuck she was talking to on the phone. So she gets ready to leave and go meet up with the others. And uh, oh yeah, there's an old man at the house. His name is Monty. He has no legs. He's in a wheelchair, and he fucking uh, tells her that Kemper already left. But of course he's dead, and the old man's just fucking in on it. Another family member. Uh, she heads back to tell the others uh, before she gets there. The uh, army, army of all people fucking arrives, and he's the cop. And he's there, and he like fucking wraps the dead body of the girl up in saran wrap or whatever. It is so funny. Arnley Army is funny as shit in this movie. He's the best part of this movie. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and say it. He's just like Chop Top from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Without him, this film would not be half as good. <laughs> I probably wouldn't even enjoy this film unless it, without him in it. But he's there, and he's still fucking funny. He's essentially playing his character from Full Metal Jacket, but it's still a riot to see. And he, he's like, uh, you gonna help me with this fucking dead body? He's uh, and uh, they they fucking wrap her up and they they get ready to put her in the in his trunk and he's like uh, no they get ready to put her in his back seat of his squad car and he's like don't put that piece of shit in my back seat oh it's so fucking funny just the way he, he plays it it's fucking hilarious and he puts her in the he, he's he he puts her well right before that he's talking about how he has respect for a dead body and he's like put that shit in the trunk it's so fucking funny. And then you get the, uh, the line from him that I thought was just hilarious. And he goes, protect and serve. That's what we do. <laughs> That's just so fucking funny. And he takes off. Um, I'm not really sure what the plan was here, what the family was going to do. I mean, what if none of them went over to the fucking Chainsaw family's house? What if they just waited there and he showed up and got the body and left? What if they just left? I mean, were they really trying to kill him or just trying to get him out of town? I'm not for sure, but whatever. Uh, so he takes off with the body. Jessica, nice tits, Bill comes back. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's talking to him, telling uh, tell that she found the sheriff, said he'd be there in 30 minutes. Uh, but they say the sheriff already came. <laughs> and so uh, the, she said, where's Kemper? And he's fucking disappeared. Nobody can find him. And they want to leave, but <laughs> she doesn't, she doesn't want to go without her man, obviously. So she decides to go look for him, her and the blonde-haired guy. Uh, they go look for him. They head into, obviously, back to the Chainsaw family's house to try to find him. And I don't like this. The family has, like, regular furniture and shit instead of, like, the bones and stuff that's made in the furniture and all that kind of shit. Or the furniture made of bones and shit, like, I really enjoyed. There's not that, there's not, like, the morbid decorations and stuff a lot in this one, which I didn't like. Uh, it's not as good, like, image-wise as the original. Uh, but she goes back in there. She's uh, looking around. Well, she's, like, distracting old, old Monty. I call him old fart distracting him he acts like he fell down in the bathroom so he can grab her ass which i don't blame him it's a great ass but anyway um the actors in this film they're more good looking than uh the actors from the first film i mean i don't mean like 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 they're actually better looking but they seem more like polished up like they're more movie uh, like they're actual movie actors instead of the realism that the first one had with the regular the regular looking people but anyway uh, she's uh, the uh, the blonde haired guy sneaks in there. He's looking around for him. Actually, knocks some shit down. Knocks some shit down. May uh, a gla uh, a jar and it fucking breaks and makes some noise. And the old fart sees him and the he's uh, he's like, "What the hell are you doing in my house?" And he keeps fucking slamming his cane against the ground. I guess it's the single Leatherface. Fucking Leatherface shows up, comes flying through there with the fucking chainsaw, tries to mow him down. Uh, she manages to make it out, but the blonde haired guy falls down and and the fucking is uh, holding off Leatherface, uh, but he, he manages to make it out too. Um, they make it outside. Jessica Nice Tits is already like a fucking million miles away. She's done hit the road. Uh, he's, he decides to go like, through in the fucking, like where they got their laundry hung up and everything. So he's just running away. He decides to go like around the house for some reason. He's running through the laundry and the sheets and stuff. It's a pretty cool image and a good scene. He fucking runs like through the sheets and all at once Leatherface swings his chainsaw and fucking slices his leg off one of his legs. And it's pretty entertaining and pretty graphic. I really enjoyed that. That was pretty cool. He takes him back inside the house and fucking 
<clears throat> takes him downstairs into the basement and fucking hangs him on a meat hook pretty brutal and on his way downstairs he's like trying to stop him from dragging him down there and his fucking fingernails break off on the wall Oof, that looked pretty <laughs> it's pretty intense he fucking hangs him on the meat hook and you really feel it when this guy gets hung on that son of a bitch uh it's a pretty good scene uh jessica nice tits is fucking uh heading <clears throat> sorry heading back to her friends to try to tell them like what the fuck's going on and shit arley army <laughs> the great arley army arrives He's there, he basically, uh, he finds a little joint in there and he uses that as an excuse to torture him for endless amounts of time. He takes the kid, Morgan, puts him inside the vehicle and fucking tries to get him to recreate the accident, with, or recreate the incident when the girl shot herself, and tries to get him to fucking shoot himself too. <laughs> but, uh, he turns the gun on Arley Army and gets ready to shoot him, but there's no bullets in it. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Arley Army basically takes him hostage and fucking leaves them there. Uh, the two girls, and he takes him hostage, and he gets the most hilarious fucking scene imaginable, where he says, where were y'all headed, and he goes to uh, Skinner concert, or whatever, and he's like, I like Skinner, but what do you think about that, we got something in common, <laughs> he's like, what are you gonna do with your tickets now, Hotshot, and that guy, fucking Morgan, he takes, well, it's Morgan is the character he has, the nerdy guy, and he fucking says, uh, he says, you can have him, and he goes, is that bribery, and he splits his brains out with a fucking bottle, and then uh, he spits out a tooth, and then Arlen Army reaches up, takes out like some false teeth, and he says, "Look at that shit. We got something else in common." <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Like I said, he brings this film up a lot. But meanwhile, back with Pepper and Jessica, nice tits. Uh, fucking Leatherface shows up there, now wearing her boyfriend's face, so that adds a little extra element to it. And fucking chainsaw into the van that they're driving, that they were driving. Uh, they, uh, Pepper manages to make it out of the van, she takes off running, Leatherface chases her down, and you get kind of a lame some death scene here, he just kind of saws, like, the back of her coat, and then, bam, she's dead, it just cuts away, and you see feathers, and you see blood or nothing, but, whatever. <clears throat> um, uh, so Jessica nice hits, <laughs> gets out of there, takes off running, Leatherface chases after a decent scene, uh, she makes it to a barbed wire fence, he gets caught in it, and he drops a saw, and it saws his leg, similar to the ending of the original film. Uh, she runs into this house, and you get, obviously, two more members of the Chainsaw family. You got a fat chick and a skinny chick. That's what we'll call them, fat chick and skinny chick, because these two characters are fucking useless. They don't amount to anything in this film. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, and so, uh, she's there with fat chick and skinny chick, and they got a fucking baby there that they, like, took from one of the victims they killed. And, uh, Jessica Bill wants to use the phone, and they say they ain't got no phone, but then she hears the phone ring, and, uh, and she fucking, like, drinks some tea, and the tea causes her to pass out as they drugged her. She wakes back up. Harley, uh, jackass army is there. Uh, he's, like, a huge asshole in this film. He's there, uh, fucking pouring alcohol in her face or whatever. She wakes up, uh, you get some more, you get, like, a backstory on Leatherface here you don't really need that kind of demystifies the character, where his name is, like, fucking Thomas Hewitt or whatever. He had, like, a skin disease. You don't need that shit. You even get a shot of Leatherface without, like, a, a skin face on, a skin mask. And you don't need that. That demystifies the character even more. You do not need to see his face. Uh, but anyway. So, uh, she, they call Leatherface in there. He grabs her and brings her, uh, fucking throws her downstairs, too, into the basement. And, uh, the blonde-haired guy's still hanging there on the hook. And you get a really cool scene here where the, he wants her to mercy kill him because he obviously can't make it out of there with one leg, and so she stabs him in the gut, and it's a pretty epic and cool scene, the music, and the, I mean, the score plays it up really well, it's pretty damn cool, but, uh, so he's dead, she finds Morgan there, uh, he's fucking sitting in a bathtub, uh, she gets him up, they manage, they start trying to make it out of there, and then the fucking little boy shows up again, he shows him the way out, tries to lead him out of there, and Leatherface starts chasing after him, a little cheesy with the little boy, like, trying to rescue him and shit and showing him out of there, but it's not too bad. They manage to find the way out. Uh, Leatherface still chases after him. They're running through the woods. They run into this abandoned building. They hide in there. Leatherface makes it in there. Uh, and, uh, he gets ready to get Jessica nice tits, but then, uh, Morgan fucking sacrifices himself, and Leatherface drops his chainsaw, and they're still struggling with him. And one of them can just pick the chainsaw up and kill him, but they don't for some reason. I don't know why. It fucking feels like it was on the ground still, like, on for, like, fucking five minutes, but whatever. Or ten minutes, I mean. But, uh, he kills Morgan and hangs him up on a fucking lampshade and... Or, uh, a chandelier, I mean, I believe, and fucking chainsaws him through the nuts, which is <laughs> the worst chainsaw death. I gotta hand it, that's the worst chainsaw death in any of these films, to be honest. 
But uh, yeah, he gets the chainsaw through the nuts, which is pretty entertaining and fucking pretty hard, pretty hardcore. If you're a guy, you know a chainsaw through the nuts ain't gonna feel too fucking good. But uh, he gets that. Nice tits manages to make it out of there. Uh, she makes her way to a fucking slaughterhouse, an abandoned slaughterhouse. Uh, Leatherface followers are there. They're there at the slaughterhouse. Well, I don't remember if he sliced his if he sliced his leg here or if he sliced it when she ran in his skinny chick and fat chick's house. I'm not for sure, but. Uh, because I didn't pay too much attention to this movie because I do like it, but it's not something I rewatch over and over because, like I've said, there's no reason for this film to exist. But anyway, um, so, <coughs> sorry, once again, I'm still getting over my allergies. Uh, they're just about cleared up. Hopefully they'll be gone by the next review. So he, they make it into the abandoned slaughterhouse. Uh, you get an interesting, a fun little scene where she's like fucking... Uh, hiding in with the meat or whatever, and he's pulling the chains and pulling the meat towards him. Uh, but eventually, so uh, you know, so on and so forth, she manages to uh, get in these lockers and hide in one of them. Leatherface is walking around. You get a fucking jump scare pig where uh, he's uh, looking for her and he hears noises and he opens up the wrong locker and there's a pig there and you don't really need that. It's just there. It could have just been empty. The locker could. You didn't really need a fucking pig there. But anyway. Uh, and she jumps out of the other one and fucking has a meat cleaver and slices his damn arm off. I mean, she's like fucking going to town on him and cuts his arm off completely off. Which is why I guess they never made a straight up sequel to this because they didn't think he even wanted to see a one arm leather face. But I thought that would be pretty fucking cool to be honest. Seeing him with like one arm starting to chainsaw with one arm would be pretty badass. But uh, anyway, so she chops one of his arms off. It falls down. His arm has got the chainsaw still attached to it. And it's fucking running and everything still on the ground. His other arm has been caught. He's jerking and shit. It's pretty entertaining. She makes it out of there. It's picked up on the road by this truck driver. Uh, it's kind of similar to the ending of the original film. Uh, and she starts acting like the hitchhiker basically from the beginning of the movie. First telling him not to go that way. But uh, he does anyway. He stops at the gas station. Uh, he walks in there, and, and Arlie Army and the fucking mama characters in there, and, and uh, the skinny chick is in there, and, and she, he, the truck driver basically tells him that he picked up some crazy chick outside who's like hysterical, and Arlie Army, uh, well, uh, Jessica Bill like steals the baby that uh, that they took from one of their victims. She takes the baby, and Arlie Army goes out there to like blow her away with his gun, and you think she's like uh, in the truck trying to fucking get it running, trying to hotwire it. Oh, like, uh, she has, a Jessica Bill's character in this film is, like, has some strengths to her. She has, like, a, some background to her where she spent some time in, I think, juvie or something like that, juvenile hall or whatever. She can hop bar stuff and pick blocks and shit, so that adds a little bit more to her character. And so just nice tits. <laughs> but anyway, so you think she's hot wiring the truck, but she's really hot wiring Arlie Armis car. And then he opens up the truck, and then, bam, he fucking gets flattened by his own vehicle. It's pretty entertaining. Uh, and she, he starts shooting at the back of his uh, his own vehicle, trying to shoot her, but she still kills him and runs him over. And you're glad to see him go, because he's a total douchebag, and he's probably more hateable in this film than Leatherface. But uh, she fucking flattens his ass and kills him, and then takes off. You get one last little scare with Leatherface again. It's not as good as his chainsaw dance. I didn't like this as much. He just fucking swings his saw with one arm at the vehicle, and that's pretty much it. And nothing happens. She gets away. She's fine. And that's Q in the movie. And at the beginning of the film, you get like this little... Uh, black and white like thing like they're exploring like the police are exploring the uh the uh fucking house uh they're, they're not called the Sawyers in this one they're called the Hewitts why that change I don't know you didn't even need that but what the fuck ever uh the, but anyway at the beginning of the film you get like this little uh black and white footage where they're these cops are like exploring the house the Hewitts house after the crime or whatever and uh at the end of the film you get that same you get like the the next bit of that footage or whatever and the cops still exploring it i like this it adds like a more realism element to the film like as it was an actual crime but uh it comes you get more footage for that i mean to add on to that at the end as for the epilogue and uh they're fucking exploring it and all at once leatherface jumps out for one last jump scare and you get a voiceover saying this is the only known image of thomas hewitt that's his name in this film thomas you don't really need that fucking name. You could just call him Leatherface. I kind of, like I've said, is demystifies the character, but whatever. But uh, they say this is the last, uh, this is the only known image of him, and the case still remains open. I saw this film in theaters when I was younger. I liked it when I was younger, but watching it again now after seeing all the films, this film doesn't hold a candle at all to the original. There's no reason for this film to exist other than money. 
They could have just made another sequel and just had this same exact story except changed it up a little bit to take away the homages and shit from the original film. And <laughs> it could have just been a really good sequel, but no, they marketed it as a remake just for for namesake so they could get more people to come see this fucker in theaters so they could get more money, but whatever, I hate shit like that. But uh, this is a good movie. It's a three-star film out of a possible four. It's not a bad movie, and it's better than Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 4, especially 4. It's not better than Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 or 2 by any means or any stretch of the imagination. But it's a it's a good movie, and it's better than uh, it's better than Next Generation, like I said, which is a steaming pile of shit. I'll just say it's better than shit because that's pretty much what it is compared to Next Generation. <laughs> it's pretty much what next, next generation is is shit, and it's better than part three because part three felt dull. And this film feels more lively and more fresh. Yeah, but at the same time, it feels too polished and too fresh, <laughs> which uh, demeans the quality of the film and makes it not as good as one and two. But all in all, this is a good movie. I'd say watch it. It's a good movie. Watch it for Arlie Army and a a good portrayal of Leatherface. But other than that, there's really nothing here. Well, besides Jessica Bill's tits. <laughs> Other than that, there's really nothing here. Uh, if you've seen the first movie, I would, uh, unless you really want to watch it, I'd say don't even bother. Uh, unless you're just a completist, you just got to, or one of those, I mean, not a completist, but one of those people that just has to see everything that comes out and just has to see it because it's in the franchise. But like I said, it just doesn't compare to the original film. It doesn't have the mood or the imagery of the, and it doesn't have a dinner table scene either, which I was disappointed in. But uh, it's got Arlie Army, and he does great. He's pretty much the chop top of this film. Not not like silly over the top like that, but over the top in a more like a rude and dickish way, <laughs> where it's fun. And Leatherface is good in this film. He's portrayed he's portrayed well. This is probably like the this is uh, probably the second best portrayal of Leatherface in this franchise after the first movie. But um. Well, unless you prefer the more comedy, jokey Leatherface of the second one, but I don't. So for me, this is like the second best portrayal of the character. So yeah, all in all, this is a good movie, not a great movie. Uh, it's worth seeing in theaters. It was worth seeing in theaters, but not paying full price to see it. This is a matinee type of film. But yeah, it's a three-star film out of four, and I'll see you guys again with Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, which is pretty much just another fucking, just a do-over of this movie. <laughs> but whatever. I'll see you guys with that film. Uh, with the next review so i hope you have a good day and i'll see you guys again with the uh, the next texas chainsaw mask review then after that the last one and then i'll be moving on to the halloween franchise since it's getting really really close to october so i'll see you guys with the next review and i hope you have a very good day